Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I got a really interesting project for you guys, which is either streaming torrents or torrent streaming on the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So before we begin, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of this. Now, a couple of years ago, there was this program called Popcorn Flix, which is wildly popular. You were able to actually watch movies, TV shows, and all that through torrent links, which was amazing. And let me explain this a little bit with BitTorrent. Now, BitTorrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network where you have this huge file that you want to download and there are 50 peers who have it. When you start downloading, you would grab uh, sections from this guy to the beginning, maybe this guy in the middle somewhere and this guy at the end somewhere. Ultimately, you would have to wait for the file to completely download before you could view the content, which is fine and all, but for media streaming, that doesn't work. You can't stream a video if it only has chunks. So what Popcorn Flix or PeerFlix managed to do was actually figure out a way to download it continuously where you have all these peers and they would just download one, then two, then three, instead of downloading all over the place, which allowed us to actually stream the file before the file was finished downloading. Anyway, since then, Popcorn Flix back in the day is no longer available, but what they use is still available, which is PeerFlix. And that's what we're gonna be checking out today along with the ability to cast to a Chromecast. To start, we're gonna be using a Raspberry Pi 4 and it could be used on basically anything. It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi 4, it could be a Linux server, it could be a Kadas, it could be anything that's Linux, and you should be able to get this working. And also, if you are planning to do this, I, I can't stress this enough, not in the scope of your own house, like how I have my own private tracker and torrent, please be sure to use a VPN. And I recommend using private internet access. That's a service I've been using for almost eight plus years. They have almost 4,000 servers worldwide. They're fast. They have multiple connections for Linux, Windows, Mac, Android, everything you want. They also have support if you ever need to do a live chat. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can sign up for that. And also by using that link, it will also help this channel out. So yeah, let's get back into it. The first thing we need to do is actually install NPM. NPM is basically a package manager for JavaScript programming. So it's like more like PIP for Python. NPM is to JavaScript. So we're gonna do a sudo app get install NPM. We're gonna let that install and give it a few minutes. Now that we have NPM installed, we could now install PureFlix. That, that's basically it. It's really just two commands. So sudo NPM install dash G PureFlix. When that's done installing, you have it available to cast to your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you have your Raspberry Pi hooked up to like a TV screen or something like that, great. Yeah, that's all you really need to do. Thanks to this video that I'm making, I learned how to make a private tracker, which is pretty cool. So I'm actually going to be torrenting my own video. And what you need is a magnet link. Now, most websites or servers or anything would have a magnet link. And that's the easiest way to get the file to load. Instead of having to download the actual .torrent file and loading it, just grab the magnet link. So start up PeerFlix space and then put it in quotes, the magnet link itself. And then at the end, you will put dash dash VLC. Now for the Raspberry Pi 4, you could just use VLC because it's powerful enough to push that video. But if you're using Raspberry Pi 3 or before, you're gonna need to use OMX. So the OMX player will kick on and that is it. As soon as you hit enter, it's gonna start grabbing the file and it will stream directly to your device. Now, if you notice, because I'm using VLC, I can manipulate how I want it to. But if you're using OMX, you might wanna add the dash dash full screen just to get it to full screen on your device. Now that's really the extent of this program. There's a a little bit more option you could do and I'll leave all the links in the description to the GitHub pages that I'm using. Next up, we're gonna actually get this device to cast to a Chromecast, which is what I was more interested in. Now to do that, you would have to do sudo npm install dash g cast now. After you install this program, that is it. CastNow is also based on PeerFlex. So it basically uses the same thing, but adds way much more functionality and it's able to cast to a screen. Now, again, I'm gonna leave all the links in the description and it has multiple options where you have command line and stuff that you could do and also how to control the player. To use it, we just type in CastNow, put into quotes the magic link, space, dash, dash, device, and then put into quotes of whatever device name is, either it's kitchen, bedroom, living room, whatever you have your device name is. Now I ran into a little bit of problem with this, so I wasn't able to use the actual name. I don't know why. So I ended up changing that dash dash device to dash dash address and then typing in the IP address. Now to find the IP address, it's easy. You could just go into your phone if you have the Google Home uh, app installed and 
look on the device and if you go to all the way to the bottom, it will actually give you the IP address of the device that you're trying to reach. So now that I got the IP address, I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna do the same thing. It basically will load. But what's cool about this, it actually gives you a time bar or a seek bar on the screen of your Raspberry Pi. Here, you could actually control it. Fast forward, rewind, stop, pause, whatever you wanna do. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Todd here from Nova Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the DOS Game 3. So, let's get started. <laughs> Just remember at the end of the video, or when you're done with this, you hit S to stop and then Q to quit. Because if you just hit quit, it'll just freeze the screen on whatever scene you're on and it'll just be stuck there. So if you hit stop and then quit, it'll actually, you know, take down the video so you won't see anything else on the screen. Now, on Cast Now, you could actually use multiple files. You could actually make a playlist and, you know, put one file or MP4. You don't have to use a magnet link. You could use files that you already have on your server, which is, you know, MP4 files. You could also do transcoding, which is a big plus because the Chromecast, I think, only supports MP4s and a lot of other stuff. What I'm more interested in is two things. One, you're actually able to pipe certain things into it so here you could actually do youtube space dash o space dash space whatever the video youtube file you're into space and then pipe you know that line the bar space cast now space dash and that basically takes the file that you're downloading from youtube downloader downloads that files and streams it and pipes it into your cast now which will pipe into your tv now this is only one situation but you could actually do multiple things with this if you're able to pipe this into cast now you could actually pipe um i don't know anything like something you're streaming or your webcam or or something like that you're able to do that which i thought was very interesting the second thing that was super interested in the cast now is that you're able to do cli commands uh, cli commands meaning you can actually have it set up so it will auto start and automatically send the video to your tv screen as soon as it boots up or you could have it loop or do a playlist or whatever it is now what's what's good about that is if you own a restaurant or you're in a restaurant environment and you want to cast your menu to a tv or cast um youtube playlist of music to your tv and as soon as you press the power button you want that to happen you could do this through the cli command so ultimately between the pure flex and the cast now I, uh, those are very interesting programs I've been looking into and that's why I decided to make this video. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts about this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. So I made a community post a week ago about doing more basic Linux tutorials like bash, kernel, uh, networking, uh, desktop environments. I might do some Linux reviews. I, I mean, desktop OS Linux reviews and stuff like that. And you guys basically 90 plus percent of you guys definitely agree that I should start something like this. I just want to let you guys know I am prepping for that. I am very interested in doing that series as well. I just have to, like I said, prep for it. And once, basically this whole series will be about getting you guys um, to transition into Linux, you could say. Like if you guys are new, uh, if you guys are still using Windows and want to switch over to Linux, this tutorial will actually get you knowing how to fully operate Linux or get used to Linux. So when you do the transition over or when you do switch over, it's not as hard or as confusing as it seems. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.